All right, guys, welcome back. Um, from having a conversation with a few of you, I just discovered that you've been naming compounds, but unfortunately, you did not have the background in oxidation charges. Okay, so I'm going to try to make a quick video on how to show you how to obtain those oxidation charges. Okay, so basically, you have your periodic table. And I'm drawing a very, like, fake periodic table right here. All right. And you have, you know, group one, group two. You have the transition metals here. You have the group three, group four, group five, group six. We're going to add another one over here. Group seven, and then finally, the noble gases. Okay? Now, I know you know the names of each family. Alkali, alkali earth, transition metals, the boron group, the carbon group, the nitrogen group, the uh, fluorine group, or whatever, right? And then finally, the noble gases. Well, each of these groups have a number of valence electrons available to give or to receive when they are bonding. Okay? Um, group 1 elements have one valence electron to give. Group 2 elements have two valence electrons to give. Transition metals, sorry, they vary in valence electrons. And then we get over here, these guys have a plus 3, carbon has a plus 4, but then things kind of get weird, okay? From carbon on down, we start switching in the trend, okay? So from carbon, we actually get minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and then 0. These are the valence electrons available from all of these elements, okay? Now, each element wants a full octet. Okay? Meaning they want their outer shell electrons full so they could look like these guys, the noble gases. Okay? But unfortunately, you know, they're not like that. Magnesium, heli uh, hydrogen, uh, sodium, potassium all have one valence electron only. And they want to give it away because in order for them to get seven more, remember the octet rule, okay? They have to go look for seven. It's just like you, again, do you have to get up and change the channel on your TV if you have the remote? No. You're going to use what uses a mo the least amount of energy. These guys give off this valence electron. These guys give off two valence electrons. These guys give off three. These guys give off four. But then here, these guys all start to change. These guys need this many valence electrons. Okay, so starting with nitrogen, they need three, oxygen group needs two, and the fluorine group needs one. Okay, so when we are talking about oxidation states, or when you're naming compounds, you're going to use these values. This is the reason why sodium, which is over here, and chlorine, which is down here, bond, because sodium has one electron to give, and chlorine needs one electron. Does that make sense? Same thing if we were to bond magnesium, which is over here, well, a little bit below, that's beryllium. When magnesium binds to chlorine, magnesium has a plus two, chlorine has a minus one, so we got to add a chlorine at the bottom to offset that charge, okay? These charges are not only the amounts of electrons that we have, and the amounts of electrons that we need, but they're also called oxidation states. Okay? Now, <clears throat> how do we obtain the number of valence electrons available from each element? Let me show you. This you should know. If we look, for example, at magnesium. Okay? 
we use magnesium's electron configuration to find its valence electrons. Now, if we do the full electron configuration, magnesium is like this. It is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Let me just double check that that's correct. Yes. Okay, now, if you count these numbers right here, that'll give you the total electrons of magnesium, which ends up being 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 electrons in magnesium. Okay? Now, if you do what's called the abbreviated electron configuration, you will write the last known noble gas, which is neon, then it's 3s2. This number right here is the number of valence electrons available, and also it is your oxidation state. Okay? I hope you can read that. If not, I'll, I'll redo it. Okay? But when you do the abbreviated configuration, this value is the reason that magnesium on the periodic table has a charge of plus two, and so does beryllium, and so on and so forth. Okay? If we do beryllium, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You'll see that it also falls at a plus two. Beryllium full electron configuration looks like this 1s2 2s2 right and beryllium has four electrons okay but beryllium abbreviated configuration we use a last known noble gas which is helium and then we do 2s2. This is the number of valence electrons. Okay? Plus 2. Now we cannot do that for other atoms like oxygen. Hope I'm not blocking. Oxygen. Full electron configuration looks like this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Okay? Now, if we do the abbreviated one, you get H E 2S2 2P4. Oxygen has six valence electrons available. But that is not the charge of oxygen on the periodic table. When we go to the charges, oxygen is at a minus two. Now, why is it at a minus two? Because, remember, everyone wants a full octet, meaning they all want eight electrons. Oxygen only has six, needs two electrons to have a full octet. And that's why we put the charge of minus two. Fluorine is at a minus one, because again, Fluorine is going to have seven valence electrons, and it needs one. Nitrogen is going to be at a minus three because it has five valence electrons, but it needs three. Okay? Again, these are called oxidation states, the behavior of electrons.